Good morning everyone. So I'm Carlo Baladad. And I'm Hannah Regidor. And we're going to be the host for this morning's event. So we are gathered today for the professional lecture entitled Surface Chemical Separation of Ultrafine Particles in Dilute Suspension. This lecture will be delivered by the Gawad Chancellor Awardee, Dr. Herman Mendoza. We are also here to celebrate his accomplishments as a professor, and mentor and his achievements as a brilliant engineer in honor of his retirement. But before we proceed with our event, let me first remind you of some house rules. For our face-to-face -face participants, please observe the minimum health protocols during the event and wear, wear your face mask at all times. Also, please do not use the seats marked with an X to maintain social distancing. Kindly put your gadgets into silent mode and questions will be entertained at the allotted Q&A portion after the lecture. For online participants, audio and video of participants are automatically turned off throughout the webinar and can only be turned on if necessary by the technical staff of this webinar. You may send your questions through the Q&A box and this will be entertained during the Q&A portion. So prior to the lecture, let us hear from our department assistant chairperson Ma'am Mitch Ayales for the opening remarks. Okay, so to our professorial lecturer, Dr. Herman Mendoza, to Sir Tito Aliga, to our faculty, staff, students, and guests, good morning. We're having this event not just to hold a professorial lecture, but also to celebrate the years that Doc Judge served the department. I guess most of us would agree that he is one of the pillar or the haligi ng DMME. The department wouldn't come this far without his significant contributions. Most of us became his students before we also became part of this department. And what we really appreciate about him is not just his way of imparting knowledge, but he also touched our hearts to, became, to become passionate on what we do. And so now to keep everyone waiting, let me welcome you to this professorial lecture. Have a pleasant morning. Uh, thank you, Ma'am Mitch. So our distinguished professor for today's lecture is Dr. Herman Mendoza, or as we fondly call him, Doc Judge. 
Doc Judge has obtained his BS Mining Engineering degree from St. Louis University in Baguio in 1979. Afterwards, he obtained his BS Metallurgical Engineering and MS Enver Environmental Engineering degrees from UP Diliman in 1981 and 1986, respectively. He then obtained his Doctor of Engineering in Mineral Engineering and Materials Processing from Tohoku University, Sendai, Japan in 1995, and a postdoctorate degree from Waseda University in Japan in 1997. He joined the College of Engineering of UP Diliman as a faculty member in 1994. During his years in the university, he has mentored numerous undergraduate and graduate students in, of metallurgical engineering, mining engineering, and the environmental engineering programs. He was awarded the Most Outstanding Professor and Most Outstanding Researcher by the UP College of Engineering in 2005 and year 2000, respectively. Doc Judge has served as project and program leader to various government projects. His contributions to small-scale mining industry plays a big role in uplifting the lives of the small-scale mining community. His DOST ERDT-funded project since 2009 Develop the process flow of recovering gold without the use of mercury or cyanide, which is applicable to small-scale mining operations. His team, with him as the lead, constructed mineral processing plants in four major small-scale mining communities in the country. Not only did he demonstrate his technical expertise to help the small-scale mining communities, but as an educator, he also helped the small-scale miners enhance their capability so that they can be self-sufficient even after the project ended in 2019. With these contributions, Clean Gem Technology for People's Empowerment and Participation has received the 2021 Gawad Chancellor sa natatanging programang pang-extension. So ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to introduce Dr. Herman Mendoza. Let us all give him a warm round of applause. Okay, thank you very much, Carlo and Anna. So anyway, uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to see all of you here. Uh, this is a, they say, okay, that uh, before you retire, you will have at least deliver your last lecture professorial lecture. Is that a requirement? I don't know. Some schools, institutions call it the final professorial lecture. Others, they call it the validatory lecture. Uh, but what is the meaning of this professorial lecture? Uh, I always research, no? What's the purpose of this? Actually, this is to honor not the professor, but to honor his students. I've been teaching for almost 27 years, including this year, I'm in an extension capacity. So 27, 28 years. And this is this my last lecture is to honor my students. I have now my students here that's why I invited them. And I'm very happy to see them because I just see them online. Okay, so I told them, please, I want to see you because I want to, for them, this is for you. And for also my advice is, no, uh, I have participants also not face-to-face -face online. Okay, they're watching now. Okay, so thank you very much. This is to honor you, my students. Okay. Now I also want to thank my own the, those who are watching or joining this event online. I have my friends, special friends, also my family. Okay, my families, my brothers and sisters. Some are abroad. Okay. Also, my students, there are people, there are my students, they are also abroad. No? So I'm glad that you are uh, watching and joining this, my last 
or my final professorial lecture. But uh, of course, uh, my professorial lecture will be, say, incomplete if I don't have my immediate family. I have now here my wife, I invite her, and my daughter, and her boyfriend, okay? <laughs> my wife's name is Leia, okay? So, so that completes it. Kung si Marcos eh, my first lady. Ako my first lady rin. Okay. So, uh, the title of my lecture is Surface Chemical Separation of Ultrafine Particles in Dilute Suspension. This topic is very near to my heart. It actually started my career, my academic career, okay? So when, after my PhD, uh, the department invited me, okay? The, it was uh, Dr. Manolo Mena, no? Sim Mena was the chair. And then he invited me, judge, magturo ka. So of course, I don't know what to teach. I don't know how to teach. What I know is just to do research. That was my orientation. So Dr. Mena, and I'm very grateful to Dr. Mena. I mean, oh, here, a piece of paper. You write your application. And there, there and there, it struck me. I have something to teach to my students. I studied surface science, mineral processing, uh, mineral, mineral, no, material processing and mineral engineering. And I think I can teach that. So for 27 years, I taught, I was teaching to my students around 500 students, metallurgical students, the very concept of surface science, of this topic, measuring the set of potential, the surface charge, the concept of electrical double layer. They all know this. While I will be discussing this, these are the concepts that I will be using. You see, I will be discussing ultrafine particles. What are these ultrafine particles? I told my students when I was discussing, you have to attend because this is an advanced, this is part of advanced mineral processing. And I cannot discuss it now. You have to attend my professorial lecture. Excuse me. So I will define ultrafine particles. I belong to the Department of Mining, Metallurgical, and Materials Engineering. If you look at it, the mining, the metallurgy, and the materials, these industries are the number one or the major producers of ultrafine particles. When I was an engineer, like mining engineer and metallurgical engineer, I was there studying, okay, and they asked me, what is the difference between mining engineer and a metallurgical engineer? Very simple. One of my classmates said, I don't know where he got this def definition. A mining engineer is responsible of getting the gold from the ground. And that's true, mining. And a metallurgical engineer, you are metallurgical engineers. Your job is to get the ground from the gold, right? But when I was a student, I was studying around, maybe around 90% of my classmates 
They are interested in the gold. But for me, I was interested in the growth, the tailings, the waste. Because you see, in mining and metallurgical, you have to separate and recover the valuable minerals. To do this, you have to reduce. You have to reduce the size, the particle size. You have to liberate to free these valuable minerals in order to recover them. But in recovering, you will also generate a lot of waste. And I'm after that waste. If you process one ton of material or ore, you throw also around one metric ton. So 99% is waste. The mining industry will look for ways to contain this, but they don't that they, uh, they forgot that when they are doing this, they are producing, they are reducing the size to very fine particles. And a part of this is ultra fine particles. Ultra fine particles, okay, first is, let me define ultra fine particles. There you are. Here's a picture I downloaded this from the internet to show you ultrafine particles. These are relative sizes. We know sun, that is around 90 microns. This one, the cement, you know the cement, that is around 74 microns. Can you just, you can imagine that, but can you imagine Ultra fine particle. You are familiar with COVID, COVID virus. It is somewhere here. Here. Coronavirus. Here, here, here. I enlarge it. Coronavirus. It is 0.1 to 0.5 microns. That is considered ultra fine particle. So you can now imagine. What is ultrafine particles? Now, while I'm lecturing here, I want you to imagine the range. The Anglican are their technologies of treating these ultrafine particles? Let's see. Okay, so when you talk of ultrafine particles, remember the Corona virus, the size, 0.1. Okay, I use this in my lectures. They, they're, they're, they're familiar with this. When I was a student, I was a mining engineer. No. I was studying metallurgical, no, mining and metallurgical engineer. We are just concerned some here, coarse particles. So coarse particles from 15 microns to 180 microns. The valuable minerals that we separate before are this big, okay? So that is fine particles. And even now, currently, our mining industry here and abroad, here and abroad, they're still processing fine particle minerals. So I told my students, do not concentrate on this. What you will learn are concepts, principles to separate fine particles. Okay, I told them, I am presenting you this because the future, when I say the future, 10, 15, 20 years, 30 years from now, the problem will be ultra fine particles, nano fine particles, ultra fine particles, 10 to the six 
10 to the minus 6 centimeters. Yeah, it's so small. Now, ultrafine particles can be valuable. And we need to extract, we need to separate, we need to recover. But ultrafine can also be a problem because they contaminate, especially our water system. Our nickel industry now, okay, our nickel, okay, um, the mine, our, we have a lot of nickel mines in the field, laterite. When you look at the particle size of nickel laterite, it is around 35 microns. It's still very big compared to ultrafine particles. But you see mining industries now, they're using settling pumps to separate. But as you reduce particles, materials, minerals, as small as possible, they float in water. They approach the weight, the specific gravity of water, one. So, the, so it's really a problem. So my lecture now will, okay? And that is the challenge. Our, the first challenge is to, introduce a separation mechanism to treat ultrafine particles. As I have said, this topic changed my life. This was the start, the beginning of my academic life. And this is what I'm teaching you now. So the challenge one is a separation mechanism. There are Three topics here. First is the solid liquid separation. The other one is solid solid separation. If there are two minerals, ultrafine particles in water, can you separate them? And then, of course, I will be doing the effect of some parameters like particle size, number, particle number concentration. After I've established the mechanism, that's the time I will go to application. So the challenge, the challenge one, okay. And this is also I'll pose to everyone. The treatment and separation of ultrafine particles. One of my students, somewhere I think in this class, they asked, there are, methods, existing methods now to treat ultrafine particles. Yes, of course, we have ultra centrifugation, ultra filtration, but these are very expensive methods. You need a lot of power, a lot of pressure, but is there a simple and rapid way of treating these ultrafine particles? and non-contaminating process. And of course, an expensive, a cheap one. So that is the challenge. Okay, uh, of course I have mentioned this. Okay, I have chosen this as my system, silica and hematite, two of the most common, of the most abundant minerals here on earth. Silica and hematite, but you see, and I made this, you see their size is 0.1, almost 0.1, and they are very monodispersed. They're almost spherical. Silica is uh, almost spherical, and then hematite is almost cubic, but they are the same, almost the same size, the same shape, okay? And then my system, I added, macroscopic glass beads. You will know later why I use this one. Remember, okay, that we are developing a mechanism. Okay, now let me go back here. Oh, never mind. okay. The first part, when you place particles or any material or mineral in water, they acquire 
charge. Now, in our condition, we are very sensitive about positive, negative. Positive ako ng coronavirus, negative ako. That's also what we are after now. You have to identify, determine the surface charge. And the surface charge of particles in water, there are a lot of mechanisms that would determine or that would dictate the surface charge of any mineral or material in water. When I talk of charge, when I talk, either it's positive or negative. And we know that very well that like charges, like poles, like charges doesn't attract, unlike they attract each other. Okay? So you measure the set of potential. What is set of potential? It is the potential, okay, an approximation of the actual surface charge of a mineral in water. This is measurable. That's why I'm teaching this principle to my students, to everyone. If you want to know the charge of your mineral in water so that you can treat and at least separate them, recover them, you must know the surface charge. Okay, for, for example, okay, I measured, or no, we measured the set of potential of the system, hematite, silica, and glass beads. And here is the result. Silica beads and I know glass beads and silica have almost the same surface charge throughout the pH range. pH is the measure of alkalinity or the, or the acidity of a solution. Okay, so throughout, throughout the pH range, silica and glass beads have the same surface charge or set of potential compared to hematite, hematite this one, okay, there's a change of sign at around 7.8. We call this when the set of potential is almost zero. That's what we call the isoelectric point. Okay, these are terms that I'm not expecting you to understand, but you see, you just remember the charges. Negative at this condition, this mineral or this material is negative, the other one is positive. And that is the purpose. Based on this, we will develop or let's develop the mechanism, okay? So these are the conditions of which you have to measure the surface charge or the zeta potential. This is, remember, this is in water. So you will mix, okay? I mix. Uh, hematite and silica, point one in water, and I want to separate them. Now, you know, I, I have to reveal a secret to you now. The first time I presented this to my professor in Japan, my advisor, no? he told me, Herman san, it's in Japanese, no? That's impossible. See? That's impossible. You cannot separate the, those particles. They're too small. <coughs> of course, solid liquid separation is very easy. But to separate those two particles, hematite from silica water, it's very, very difficult and it's even possible. So, I crashed now. Parang binagsakan ako ng malaking bato. Bug. That was my first year in my PhD program. I don't know what to do. But you see, okay, when you are faced with an impossibility or impossible process, that's the time you have to think. I did not read any book. I just think of a concept. 
to make my problem possible. And yes, I did think of a, pos a possibility. And that's what I work, work without the knowledge of my professor. So that's it now. So I'm developing the mechanism now. So there's a mixture of ultra fine particles, hematite and silica. And I introduced another system that is glass beads. Now glass beads here, the size, it's just, this is just a schematic diagram. The glass beads is actually compared to the size of the hematite and silica is very big. It's around 80 microns. Okay, so you can just imagine. So you bear with me. You have, I want you to imagine while I'm discussing this. Now, there are two approaches, okay, that I use to is investigate the mechanism. What one is an attachment stage and the other one is a detachment stage. Attachment, you can see here that there is an attachment. Attachment condition is at page five. Why? Because silica here is negative, hematite here is positive, and glass beads here, I should say, and silica here is negative. So I am playing with the surface charge or the set of potential. What will happen? So I mix them using this tumbling method or a mixture. This was a mixture with glass beads. And then after a while, it's clear. What happened? This is the mechanism, okay? And then tumble and then at pH five. So you can just imagine what's happening. You know this figure, okay? When I was able to get this figure, this was my breakthrough. In other words, this was my Eureka. I almost jumped. I, I, I really jumped. I was really, my wife, I was very happy when I, I, she was with me when I took my PhD. We celebrated when I took this picture because you see, we were able to establish, I was able to establish a configuration we're in. Hematite acted as a bridge between silica and glass beads. Now separation is very possible now. Separation of silica from hematite. This is the setup for detachment, okay? So the first process or stage was to attach hematite and silica to glass beads, onto glass beads. But because there was attachment because hematite acted as the bridging particle. Okay, detachment. Now detachment happens when the silica and hematite, they are already at the surface of the glass beads. Okay, so why pH 11? It is because at pH 11, glass beads, hematite and silica, they all possess negatively charged, so they repel, right? So there's a rinsing solution I place here. This is the column bed, okay, column bed. I think this is the, let me, okay. This is the apparatus. That is the column bed, okay. So this is to maintain the condition like pH, okay. I have to, to, assemble this setup. So when you pass, when we pass a rinsing solution at, def, at pH 11, at alkaline condition, okay, what happened? There was separation. 
silica was detached from the hematite that was attached to the glass beads. There was now separation. And the, this is the yield, okay? The higher the pH, the more silica separation from the hematite and from hematite. That is the mechanism. Simple as that, right? But it is not that easy. You have to prove mathematically. Well, you know, when you take your PhD, okay? It's not enough that you show that there is a result. You have to prove mathematically. So here are some total energy equations. First, okay? is the electrostatic repulsive energy. Here are the different interactions. And these are the, I interpreted these interactions by using these potential energy curves or equations. Repulsive, electric stat, uh, electrostatic repulsive energy, which is always repulsive. And it is balanced with the Van der Waals attractive energy, which is always attraction. And this coupled with this short range, these are the forces at very, very close range at, at Armstrong level or at some distance from the surface. To cut the story short, okay, oh, here are the parameters considered. Okay, so here are the set of potential, they're all here. So anyway, here is the result of the total potential curve. This is for hematite and silica, different behavior. For glass beads and hematite, different behavior. And this is how we interpreted it. The energy for a particle to overcome Okay. The energy for it to overcome, there's an energy to be detached are the following. For the silica and hematite, okay, there is an energy barrier. It has to overcome this energy barrier for it to be detached. But for the hematite and silica, this is, it requires a bigger or a larger energy barrier. So when you're looking at it, this is easier to detach compared to between the hematite and glass beads. That is the very reason why we have separation after detachment. And that is the mechanism and this is the proof. Okay, there are findings, okay. Uh, of course, the separation of ultrafine particles of hematite and silica from their aqueous, from aqueous media was possible when the hematite particles acted as a bridge between the glass beads collector and silica, okay, because they have opposite sides. The solid-solid separation, which is our objective, okay, the solid solid separation was possible of, for silica particles from hematite particles in aqueous media was achieved through selective detachment of silica. And this was possible because the energy barrier for the silica hematite interaction is significantly less, as I have shown you, than the glass hematite interaction. Thus, selective separation of silica particles is possible. That's the mechanism. Okay. You see class or when you use this, these are very basic principles, but you can solve a lot of problems. when you are dealing with 
very fine particles. So this is the, the conditions I've set for the previous. Now, what will happen when you apply this to the real world? Now, here is the challenge now. So to study further the mechanism, okay, particle size and particle number concentration was investigated. What will be the effect in the separation of hematite and silica? So first is the effect of particle size. Again, this is the methodology. First stage is attachment at acidic condition, page five. And the second, okay, is detachment at alkaline condition. I can see people making notes. Don't take notes, no? I'll not give an exam tomorrow. Okay, so tomorrow they will have their exam. So uh, you just listen. Huh? Uh, we, I, I, uh, I teach them, they are under me with Doc Kate, no? In one to seven, we're, we, I'm teaching all of these concepts to them. Uh, and I told them to listen because they will need this in the near future. They are the future. If my generation is fine particle, their generation or your generation is ultra fine particle. So you must know this. So the effect, hematite particles, with various sizes of silica, sir. Silica, sir. Silica particles, sorry. Here are the particles, uh, the different particle interactions, different sizes of silica. Okay, 0.12, this is the original, 0 0.33, 0.55. So, what will happen? What will be the effect in the separation? So, there's a mixture. Again, there is a the mixture. Or different uh, size of uh, sizes of uh, silica. And again, using the same first stage attachment, and then you observe, you look at the behavior. This is first hematite and silica, wala pang glass beads, okay? You look at the effect. There you are. This is the effect. There's, you see, it is, it, what do you call this? It is a raspberry configuration, right? Silica, hematite surrounding the silica, but different, depending on the site, it has different behaviors in heterocoagulation behavior. Because at this condition, hematite is positive and silica is negative. Okay, so this is the effect when they are only, only when silica and hematite are in the solution. So this is uh, the attachment isotope. Remember the critical particle concentration? Okay. It was, there was a plateau. When you go beyond the saturation point, the attachment of one particle, smaller, the smaller particle plateaus, okay? So what will be the effect if we have glass beads in the system? Here, again, the condition is you have glass beads is negative at page five and hematite is positive and then silica is negative. What will happen? And here are the different interactions. There you are. Okay, but what will happen in the presence of hematite? Please watch. The configuration changed. 
But you see what is common here is the same configuration, which I have mentioned late, uh, a while ago. The hematite acted as a bridging particle to the glass beads and silica. See, regardless of the particle size, silica. Again, this proves this configuration. So, regardless of the size of silica, the bridging mechanism always prevails. So you can now apply detachment using the same setup, using the same condition, and using you see, what's that? Okay, and then you see, as you increase the particle size, you also decrease the yield. So the bigger the silica, the less the separation. Because you can see the energy barrier also increases. For the, for the 0.1 micron silica, it's 20, 0.28 for that 0.33 and this and becomes bigger. But still, this energy barrier are still less compared to the barrier of hematite detaching itself from the glass bead. So you can still separate silica at different particle size condition, okay? So regardless of the size of silica, the bridging mechanism was always that which caused the attachment of silica and hematite particles onto the macroscopic glass beads collector. The bigger the particle, the harder to detach and to remove because, because of the presence of a bigger energy barrier. Okay. Are you still following me, class? Okay, very good. I can see heads nodding very good. Now the effect of particle number concentration. What will happen if we vary the particle number concentration? Okay, again, we follow the same methodology, attachment and detachment. And here are the different particle number concentration, 75, 25, 75% silica and 25% hematite and so on. Okay, just to look at the effect of separation. Okay, here is the fine, and then tumbling again. And then at what will happen at pH five? And then we do the attachment stage. Again, you observe. The same, okay, the behavior. The hematite always be the bridging particle. But you see the silica will be attached to one or two hematite particles onto the glass beads. So when you apply the touch with the same attachment at pH 12 or pH, sorry, pH basic conditions 11 and 11.5, were in the surface charge of silica, glass beads, and hematite. They are negative, of course. I have to emphasize that. There's the separation. And then as you increase okay, the particle ratio concentration or the particle concentration ratio of silica to that of hematite, the more detachment or the more separation. Okay, so you can see here at 75, 25% silica to hematite, the separation of silica is around 80%. Hematite is 18%. The silica at 11 at higher pH, it's higher at 
and 15% for hematite. And then when you shift the recoveries or the touch, retouchment also changes. And at minimum, okay, when the particle uh, number concentration is at 25 to 75, that is more hematite as bridging part, particle, the less separation. And this is the reason again, because of the different energy barriers. Of course, when one silica is attached to two hematite, it would be harder for the silica to detach. Okay. So in conclusion, in the presence of glass beads as the collector that is macroscopic 80 microns at pH five, Attachment is possible because glass beads and hematite or silica possesses, has a negative charge and hematite is a positive charge, okay? It is apparent. So we have the glass beads, hematite, silica configuration. Hematite as the bridging particle. It is apparent when the particle number concentration ratio of hematite particles increase in relation to the silica particles, the attachment of both particles was significantly promoted. The more hematite particles acting as a bridge between silica and glass beads, the more silica particles were detached. Okay, the attachments of silica particles from the glass bead hematite silica was reduced as the particle number concentration of hematite increased. Okay, it was attributed to the fact that more hematite particles acted as a bridging particle. So we have established the mechanism, okay? And you might ask, okay? You might ask, can we apply this? principles. Okay, so these are some applications. Uh, before, uh, I, I want to show you this. Uh, these are the number of uh, masters and PhD students I have that I mentored. And the, here are the topics they, okay, uh, some are environmental engineering, materials engineering, and metallurgical engineering. I want to emphasize this, surface science. So the concepts of set of potential electrical double layer, there were students, around 50% of my advices studied that, studied surface science, okay? So uh, here I have, uh, several PhDs, I have six around, and then 58 around, and then 58 masters, six, two, three plus two, that two here, in the Pasila Tapos, okay? So that's why I, I added, the Pasila Tapos. <laughs> so, but I already added that because this is my last lecture. And then as I have uh, mentioned a while ago, you notice this undergrad around 500 students. If you multiply my length of service, let's say around 25 years, and then every year I have around 25 or 20 metallurgical students, you multiply that. So I have thought the concept of surface science set up potential, flotation, electrical double layer to around 500 students. That includes you, of course. So at least when I leave as a retiree and you leave this, you know something about surface science and then you can go to surface science, ultra fine particles. 
Here are the topics, okay? You look at the first one. See, Doc Less, you know Doc Less, okay? Her name before was still Lantix, and now she is uh, Dr. Diaz, okay? Her topic is the surface chemical separation of finely dispersed mercury in aqueous. No, mercury. This was studied or investigated because of a problem with the small scale industry. They use amalgamation. You know that very well. The small scale industry, small scale gold industry, they place a lot of mercury and then they, they grind the materials, they forgot that when they're grinding, they're also reducing and generating and producing fine uh, droplets of mercury. Douglas was able to solve that. She attached the finely dispersed mercury to a collector. Hematite was negative in a very wide range of pH and she uses a positive collector. I think a fiber. You see, she was able to do that. I have uh, Ivy Bellario here. They studied bubbles. Kate, Doc Kate is here. Okay, she is also my student in masters. She studied dissolved air flotation. Using the subject is weird. so she uses also surface science. There are also here Mike uh, Cortez and Spirito. They studied the stability of nickel laterite or the components of nickel laterite in water using surface science. Uh, this is also unique. Uh, they measured so Vihila, we see Jo. He studied, he measured the surface charge of set of potential of microorganisms and attached it to gold. Imagine attachment. Now the rest, uh, they use, uh, are here. Stella, now he's here. She predicted, okay, she introduced a method. I have taught you how to measure set of potential using electrophoretic, but she introduced a different method by predicting it by using the tumbling method, several unknown minerals and using attachment and detachment, you can predict the set of potential. Very good. And here, of course, again, in the mining industry, small scale and large, Activated carbon, when you are using activated carbon to absorb gold values, okay? In their tailings, there are very fine activated carbon. They measured, there are studies that measured the set of potential. But based on this, the set of potential, you can recover this very fine activated carbon. These are loaded with gold, remember? They're recorded, and then you can float them. They use flotation. There are also studies, okay, that measure the set of potential of bubbles, micro bubbles, with the hope that these micro bubbles can attach to micro or ultra fine particles, and you can use flotation as the mechanism, and so forth and so on, okay? So there are, these are the studies. Again, the future is ultrafine particles. So I encourage my students, you are the future, okay? And you can study, you can go to ultrafine particles and you can use this as your main reference my dissertation entitled surface chemical separation of ultrafine particles in dilute suspension and that is the japanese interpretation 
of my dissertation. So thank you very much. So well, that is my lecture, and I hope you learned something. I, I was glad that this was not a speech. I'm not very good in delivering speech, but if you let me lecture something like this, you will learn something from me, okay? Thank you for that very informative lecture, Doc Judge. We may now entertain a few questions from the audience. Oh, yeah. there are for some. our online participants, you may submit your questions through the Q&A box. So, I thought we'll have a question and answer. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Uh, of course, you're welcome, no? If uh, anyone, don't be, don't be afraid, though. You can ask questions. There's a mic. I think there's a mic there. Oh, Michael is here. Hello, Michael. Ah, yes, Manong. Ah, I have to acknowledge uh, Manong Tito Aliga. She's the president of the foundation UPRDFI. I invited him here. Ah. Okay. Yes, Manong. Uh, Prof. Mendoza calls me Manong. I call him Ading. These are the words of endearment in Ilocano. Ading is a younger sibling. Hello, Ading. I have a question. Oh, apparently, this is this, are, uh, this is a study you did 30 years ago in Japan. Yes. And of course, the uh, multiplication of that knowledge continues on and on. Yes. Thank you very much, Adding, for doing that. Now you say that this will be your last lecture. I would uh, like to see you as the guy who will say impossible to your students. Because from your story, it was the Japanese professor who said it's impossible. Yes. That gave you light, gave the inspiration to do what you did. Yes. So please, Tell your students, impossible ang bata, and they will uh, prove you wrong. Okay, <laughs> Bion? So when he says something, tell him, Sir, pwede ba yan? And he says, impossible. Then you continue with the work. Thank you very much. So it's not a <laughs> thank question. You, thank you very much, Maro. When you encounter questions or comments, something like, Hindi maganda yan. Impossible yan. Now, you take that positively. Because, you see, uh, it was that time when I was reading a lot of books. Okay? A lot of books. And then, my professor, it was impossible. And then, what? So, it helped me. Okay? It triggered something in my mind to be more creative. I have to look back from kinder up to my all of my courses, master all the knowledge I have learned. And then that's it. Okay, you will become more creative. You give yourself time to think and to be creative. I observe when I give you some topics, interesting topics, you get yourself. A Google again. Take time to give yourself to think and be creative without touching anything. You use this. And that's what I did. And that's what I want to share with you. Okay, any more questions? Yes, yes. Uh, Terence, yeah, they're pushing. Shay. Uh, 
I see Michael. Say, come on, Michael. Yeah. Michael now is working with the Central Bank. Hi, Doc. Hello. Uh, may tanong lang pa ho. Uh, regarding po dun sa, di ba, yung isa is, I'm not sure himatay ko yun. Basta ma, mas madaling madetach yung isa compared sa isa because of the energy barrier. Yes. So, paano po may ensure na nadetach lang yung isa compared dun na, ano ba, na hindi both madetach? Ay, yes. Yeah, that's true. Uh, when you analyze the resulting rinsing solution, okay, of course, the amount of, or the number, the amount of silica is more than the hematite. Well, how to make ensure? You have to analyze. You have to look. You have to compare. Okay? So, uh, as you can see, or I don't know what, there's, there are also hematite that were detached. But generally, silica was detached. Even in other processes like flotation, when you float and separate materials, you float generally the valuable minerals. But there are also my sumasara parin tailings. But when you analyze, you have the concentrate. The concentrate means it contains more valuable minerals compared to the gum minerals. So you have to analyze, you have to compare the analysis to, to be sure that there is separation. Okay. So you, you, you analyze different at different conditions and then to make sure that there is separation. There's indeed separation. Is that okay? Thank you very much. Any more questions? Mama, do you have any questions? <laughs> ah, yes. Also, uh, Anj uh, Amparado, from, also from Central Bank. Well, uh, alumni ako. I was a student of Doc Judge mga two semesters ago. So, uh, my question, Doc, is on the Van der Waals equation. Joke lang. <laughs> um, hindi, Doc. Um, mas, ano, mas realistic yung question ko, especially for the working group. Um, alam ko yung mga students dito, uh, all they would want to do is enter the industry. Kasi they would want to earn and they would want to establish themselves na in, in different in various uh, metallurgical industries. So my question is, is there a best time or is there a too late for a uh, former student uh, to enter grad school or pursue PhD po? Like for those of us who are already in industry for more than 10 years now, um, is it still recommendable to pursue uh, a additional master's degree or a PhD po? Definitely, yes, of course, no? Age doesn't matter. If you want to seek knowledge, regardless if you are undergrad, master's, PhD, you are 40, you are 20, you are 30 years old, 40 years old, 8 years old, you're always, knowledge is always there. You always seek for true knowledge. For the question is definitely yes. Okay. If you have undergrad, you take your master's, you take your PhD. If you're already old or probably in the industry and you want to go back, the academy is always there. Learning is a continuous process. It will never stop. You earning a degree, we should not also stop. Earning should not also stop, right? So uh, my students, we have people here from Central Bank, start your application and, and do that and give it to you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Mm -hmm. And for those who ask questions,
Uh, for the next portion of our program, we would like to call on the Executive Director of EARDP, Dr. Tito Aliga, for a few words or maybe a thousand words daw po. <laughs> Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, this part of the program is a seeing it part. I came here early and I asked Carlo to give me a, a short time to do something to honor our professor. And he told me, sir, a few words lang. I said, no, pwede ba thousand words? <laughs> Thank you very much, Carlo. But again, on behalf of uh, the UP Engineering Research and Development Foundation, we would like to thank Judge Mendoza, Prof for his invaluable service to our college. Our foundation supports the faculty, student, and facilities program of our college to enable us to produce top-notch graduates that will serve us in the future, much like Professor Mendoza here. Professor Mendoza was the holder of the Felix Mining Professorial Chair for many, many years. I think since it was established Yes. In 1997, that's the Felix Mining Corporation chair. The other uh, chairholder was or is Professor Albert Amorsolo. Now, this book was uh, our foundation was set up in 1972, so we celebrated our 50 years last August. So we would like to express our appreciation to Professor Mendoza for his uh, service to the college, the university to the nation, especially now that his works are being applied in four different small-scale mining sites. And that is the dream of our foundation, that our professors don't stop in the academy. They go forward into society and make a difference in our places. And uh, Prof. Mendoza, thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to uh, turn this over to you. Wow. Great. Yeah, as our gift. So, what a gift. Thanks. Ah, there, there, there. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Anna. So, you see. That the title is Next Golden Age. Uh, I'm, you see, gold. Uh, I, I like gold. No, but uh, again, as, as I said a while ago, we would like uh, this will not be your last lecture because soon you will be lecturing as the impossible professor. Yes, of course. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Sir Tito, and thank you, Doc Judge. So before we proceed to our interview portion, we have videos here from his former students and colleagues. So let's get to know Doc Judge first through their perspectives. Happy birthday, Doc Judge. So si Doc, I advisor ko noong BS, uh, met Eng and MS and by Eng and parehas acid mine drainage ang topic. So, naka-influence si Doc sa aking career dahil AMD rin ang project ko ngayon. He also taught me to trust the process and uh, nag-mock defense kami before ng three times. So, ngayon, with my advices, nagpapamock defense din ako kahit na hindi siya uh, practice dito sa amin. So, happy retirement din, Doc, and have a wonderful day. Ang nasasabi ko kay uh, Dr. Herman Mendoza, no? uh, kung tawagin namin dyan sa ano, College of Engineering ay si Doc Judge, ay malaki yung naging papel niya sa aking success, no? sa aking PhD. Uh, Di dahil sa kanya, siguro, hindi ko rin matatapos to yung aking PhD. Now, wherein, 
during that time, nung natapos ko na yung mga academic courses ko, naghahanap ako ng advisor dyan sa College of Engineering. Medyo nahirapan ako kasi walang masyadong tumatanggap sa akin na magiging advice. Even I, I, I went to Institute of Chemistry ano, na mag, naghanap ako din ako doon na magiging advisor doon sa aking research na uh, of course medyo hindi ay naging successful meron ako nakita pero eh, suddenly uh, back out no so parang almost a year na sa paghanap pa lang ng advisor hindi ako nagiging successful hindi ako nagiging uh, hindi ako nabigyan ng pagkakataon no na ma-improve ang aking sarili na kaya kong tapusin research me uh, Si Doc Judge actually, parang anghel siya sa akin. Dahil sa kanya, nabigyan ako ng pagkakataon. So for almost one year, when I met him and asked him na kung pwede siya maging advisor ko sa aking research, walang, ano no, walang, uh, hindi na nag-isip and nagsabi kagad na yes. So, malaki yung papel niya kung bakit ko natapos itong aking pagiging PhD. So, since ang expertise niya doon sa surface science, which is actually related doon sa aking research na. But, hindi ko na-apply yun yung natutunan ko sa kanya uh, with regards to surface science so, kasi may mga limitation ng aking research. It's more of the uh, treatment pero wala dun sa material. Uh, very few of the materials. And dun ako, nagkaroon ng idea na malaking papel pala dun yung material science sa aking research na hindi ko na-experience when I took my academic courses in chemical engineering, of course, during my, P, my master's and PhD. Kasi environmental engineering, pero hindi nakafocus dun sa material science. So, ang masasabi ko lang sa iyo, Doc Jads, so, um, Uh, uh, continue uh, ang pagiging uh, 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 very ano tao dito yung um, approachable mo and good health and God bless you po saya magiging journey ni mo after uh, serving the university thank you so much po yeah, Hello, Doc. Hi, happy birthday. Um, okay, so the first time we met, I think, sa Met E1-2 series, Met E1-1 nag-start. And then from that uh, class, one, Met E1-2-7, and then naging undergrad, this is advisor ka namin. And then of course, grad school. Ayan, naging advisor ka namin for grad school, project leader uh, ng uh, project during my stay in uh, the department. So, wow. How many years has it been? <laughs> so, mm -hmm. tagal na siguro mga more than a decade na. So, uh, isa sa mga pinaka-influence nyo sa akin at least is when you said, the, first, the very first time you said na, you know what, Ivy, you have a knack of explaining Uh, something complicated to other people na naiintindihan nila. So, uh, when I was younger, nung narinig ko yun, sabi ko, talaga ba? So, <laughs> pero no, uh, I started teaching other people uh, also said something similar. So, parang siguro tama, tama din si Doc. Nakita niya na yung ganun sa akin before. So, it really, I think, influenced yung naging uh, nature ng work ko uh, from before pa. So, I'm really thankful. Thank you so much. Um, me, my parents, my whole family is really grateful. And uh, hanggang ngayon, bit-bit na, bit-bit pa din, ko pa din yung mga lessons that you have imparted. And um, Because you're one of the people that uh, shaped really who I am today. And for that, uh, I'm really grateful. 
Uh, I really appreciate you, Doc. So happy, happy birthday. I hope that you enjoy your uh, retirement soon. And uh, we hope um, the kids and I and my family could see you soon. Happy birthday. Bye-bye. I'll see you soon, Doc. Hello, Doc. Congratulations hey. on your retirement. And uh, I would like to personally thank you for uh, the knowledge that you have imparted on us, lalo na sa batch namin. Um, half of us nag-pursue ng uh, graduate studies um, per, because basically na, ano, na interest kami sa mga pinagsasabi niya sa amin. <laughs> so, ayun. Uh, um, would like to also wish you all the best on your um, retirement. Um, I wish you a very healthy and wealthy uh, life ahead. So uh, thank you so much from in behalf of uh, 2013 batch and um, 2015 uh, Met E graduate batch. Uh, thank you so much, Doc. See you around. Happy, happy, happy birthday po, Ninong Doc Judge. And I wish you all the best in your retirement. And hopefully, you can visit us here in Canada now that you have more time. And um, I just want to say that I'm very proud of your accomplishments and achievements as a professor in the university. And I'm very glad that um, I got you got to be my mentor. Um, when I was doing my undergrad and my master's, and I'm I'm very happy to tell you that I'm <laughs> I carried all your um, teachings until I did my PhD and as a postdoc, and now I'm transitioning into the industry. So <clears throat> hopefully I make you proud, and um, and hopefully I see you soon. So, good luck po and take care. Bye. So, thank you for all those video messages. Now that we have gotten a little bit of idea who Doc Judge is, let's get to know him better by chatting with him a little bit more. <laughs> so, we would like to invite Doc Judge on the stage. We have prepared the sofa so that we have... a. <laughs> <laughs> so that we will have a good ambience during our chat. So you stay here, stay here. Uy. <laughs> Dapat may kasama ko dito. Okay. Yes. <laughs> hey, so Doc, um, ito, I think this question is, uh, we are all very curious about it because uh, even at any <laughs> part of your name, we cannot find the origin <laughs> for this. Uh, so first, we would like to ask, where did Doc Judge uh, that nickname came from? Okay. <laughs> I, I let Mary. So I have a picture to ask you. Preparado ako because of that. They always ask me that. Every, every event, every session, everywhere I go, no? they always ask me, bakit doc judge? Bakit judge? Okay. My my first question, my my answer is very simple. Tingnan ko, hindi ba? I look like a judge. Hindi ba? So, I, I have a special, okay, but, but anyway, that we will show that later on. Uh, that was my name given to me by my father. I was still five, four years old. 
He gave me that because of how I look. Tingnan niyo. Then, after 60 years, ito na ako. The same. <laughs> you see? So, five years old pa lang ako, I already look like a judge. So, my father, to my ako, just to see how I look. Okay. So, my father, okay, I was a subject for, nabubuli ako because of my appearance before. So, sabi ng father ko. And he thought, no, lahat ng mga judges, karamihan ng mga judges, no, bold and bald. Okay. So, sabi ko, tawagin ko nga ito, judge. But you see, that was the turning point of my life when I was called judge. So you go everywhere. Even the president ng UP, president ako, sasabihin niya, do you know Herman Mendoza? O sinong Herman yan? But when you say, you know Doc Judge? Yes. So that is the reason why. Okay? And I'm very thankful for my father now. Yan ang significant contribution niya sa buhay ko. My name. Okay. It's not that fun, no? Because when I was four and five years old, four or five, I really looked like a judge. Okay? Now, of course, in between, may nangyari. Marami nangyari. But after my retirement, ganun pa rin. <laughs> Okay. So I hope na na sa aging curiosity natin for that. So yung next question man natin for Doc would be about yung uh well yung next chapter of your career Doc which is your retirement. So yung first question natin is having served the academia and the industry for more than 25 years, how do you feel about retirement Doc? Well, uh, I haven't thought of that. But uh, I will say, I will keep on walking. Why? Because uh, walking 10,000 steps a day. I, you might be wondering. When Before I retired, I was already walking. And then I still continue walking. But while walking, I still want to teach. That's why I'm teaching now. I still want to do something new. I want to discover things. Okay. I told my wife and my daughter, parang gusto kong mag kumuha ng second PhD. Wow. Natuwa kayo, no? Sa PhD about uh, siguro cooking. I like cooking. I like food cooking. But of course, that was, that's just a dream. No? There are a lot of things when you, when you are young, something like this, and then you're not thinking about uh, retiring. But when you're retired, wala naman nag-change. So sabi ko, some of my friends, I joke with them, oh, I'll stay with my family, I'll stay with my wife, asarin ko siya araw-araw. I, I discuss with her araw-araw with my daughter, ganyan. When you are retired, you go back to the basics, okay? You go back to your family. You go back to your close friends. And then I want to say that my friends, my close friends now, were my students. So that's why I told you, this lecture is in honor, not para sa akin, but to honor my students. So, I'll keep on walking while I'm still walking. I'm still healthy. I'll, I'll, I'll maintain my health. But I can do other things while walking. <laughs> Thank you, Doc Josh. So, um, we are all curious. Uh, what will you miss most from the university? Again, please. What will you miss most? Miss most. Uh, the students or? Of course, obviously. 
I will miss my students. Okay. My former student, Kayo, I will always miss. Because with the university, I it's always there. But kung lang estudiante, walang university. Of course, I will miss most Carlo. Carlo, I've been, and then Hannah, naging estudiante for many years, and they they became my staff sa project, no? And they became also my close friends. Yun ang mamimiss ko. That's why I always come here, not for the building, not for the, but for my students. That's why I invited you to come and watch my lecture. Because I still miss you. Kahit online kayo. That's what I miss most. Up to now. Thank you for that, Doc. We'll also uh, visit you whenever <laughs> uh, we miss you as well. So, so the next part are some questions about, uh, of course, you have a lot of accomplishments for Doc. So um, with all of these accomplishments, we would like to know what you consider as important milestones in your career? Milestones. Mm -hmm. Every cent is a milestone para sa akin. I am always excited to meet my new students. So every year is a milestone. Naging estudyante ko sila. Naging estudyante ko naman. So I consider every year, every semester as a milestone. Okay? So for 27 years, yun ang milestone. So my 27 years in the academy, ang bilis. I never noticed magre-retire na pala ako because every year is a milestone. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, another milestone is something, individual milestone. You know? Very, very Unique ito. I don't know. Ang student ko from third year. You know, I meet them third year. No, 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 five years pa. Naging estudyante ko sila ng fourth year, fifth year. And then they enter the master's. Nagiging estudyante ko na naman. <coughs> Luckily kung mag-patient, maging estudyante ko. But when they start their Careers, okay. When they start, I, I still have you. Thank you, thank you. When they start to marry, yeah, they have their own life. You know, milestone, kung ginagawa nila akong ninong. You see, milestone yan. And then after that, si Carlo here is inaanak. Ayan, inaanak ko yan. And then the rest, si, si Dr. Si Aileen, inaanak ko rin. These are milestones. It's all my milestone are my students, not awards, not my position. It's always my students. Kayo. Yeah. That's yun ang mga accomplishment ko are my students. So thank you for the judge. Actually, yung next question ko is about the awards that you've been that you've received. So having won almost all the awards in our university, the outstanding researcher, outstanding instructor, and uh, outstanding professor, so I am a uh, Gawad Chancellor for uh, natatanging uh, extension, program ang pang extension. How have these awards helped you in the practice of your profession, especially as a faculty member in the university? Uh, yeah. uh, let's talk of awards, okay? I divided, there are two types of awards. Okay? What I cherish most and what is very valuable sa akin is an award that involves my students. You know, uh, best professor, best researcher, outstanding professor, outstanding, it's all me. That's very easy. I, I get the award, I get my plaque, I I place it in my room. I place them in my room, hang them, and that's it. Para sa akin lang. But 
what I cherish most is an award, yung Gawad Chancellor, yung for community extension. Okay? That is not an award for me. That is an award for my team, for the department, for the College of Engineering. It is an accomplishment. So I told my team, okay, all of them, this is an award that you can own. You place it in your bio data because you are part of this award. Yun ang gusto kong mga award that involve everyone. Yun ang mga awards that I really, I really cherish and value. Okay? Yung individual awards, of course, they're there. But they're only secondary in terms of awards. Para sa akin, ma? Thank you for that talk. We are also honored to be part of your team. Um, so, aside from these awards, uh, ito naman is something that we would like to know as we grow into our profession and as well um, age up. Uh, what advice could you give to the faculty members and researchers? for career development planning in the university setting? Wow. Okay. Uh, I am a researcher and a teacher at the same time. Okay. So my advice to our faculty, no? and even students, or our new faculty and our future faculty members, um, you develop that balance. Okay, you develop the balance of teaching and doing research. Teaching is a ang formula jan. Okay, just love your students. Okay, when you teach, it's something like this. The, my, this is how I look at teaching, no? And I think you can also follow this. I consider myself not the real or the main actor when I teach. The main actor when I'm teaching are my students. That's why I never failed. In my 27 years, I never failed. Student. We sabi nila, we buti na lang, teacher natin si Doc Judge. But I have second thought now, this is my last year. <laughs> now, uh, that's that's the role I am taking as a teacher. Okay, I always take the back seat as a background. Teaching is sharing, purely sharing. In the highest sense, no? It is sharing. So, and then something like this, when you do research, my secret is something like this. You have to work with others. You have to interact with people. For example, I have a project. I cannot say, a project ko lang ito. I will write a paper from this. Paper ko lang ito. No. When you have a project, think of kung saan pupunta yung project mo. Will it benefit project? Now, we, when it, it will benefit others, that is the real project. And uh, when I talk of working with others, you work with a colleague. Like here in, in our department, it's better that you have a project not only for material science or material engineering, not projects for metallurgy, engineering only for mining engineering it is better that when you have a project you have all these disciplines working together when you move higher let's say the college of the department of mining or metallurgical and materials it's better if we have a project 
if we work with other departments, civil engineering, mechanical, can you think of those? It's also better if you work with, this is research, huh? if you work with other colleges. Our project, kami yung project namin, we were successful because we work with another college, CSWCD, College of Social Work and Community Development. I hope Doc Oski is here. We have to work for our project, for our research to be successful. Ganon. You develop the sense of teamwork when you do research. I think that's the secret. Okay, so yeah, that's my uh, my answer to that. You you do that's when you do research. You work with others. Yes, that's very important, especially for our line of work that we have. Uh, uh, multi, it's a multidisciplinary. Uh, you call it the mga corporations na pinupuntahan natin in the industry. So thank you for that. And now, um, I would like to ask our audience if they would like to ask for some tips and advice in their uh, as they go to through their metallurgical engineering life. Okay, so, and, okay, meron tayong question from uh, ah, meron, Zoom audience. Oh, meron din from the Zoom audience. I would like to call on uh, this. Jern Lagrosa. Hi, Jern. So you can unmute and uh, open your camera. Hello, Ate Jern. Hello. Can you see me? Yes, yes. Can you see me? Hello. Hi, Doc Judge. Hi, Carlo. Um, hi, everyone. Yes. Um, hi, Hannah. Um, yes, actually, it was not a question. It was more of, I would like to express um, my deep commendations. Am I audible? Hello? Yes. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. I think it's my... Signal, I'm actually out um, on my field work at the moment. And um, yeah, so I'm just trying to um, to join online and connect. Um, so yeah, I just would like to, to, it was not a question, it's just to express my deep commendations no, after, right after the lecture um, and just to share that um, it was quite a nostalgic experience um, hearing the lecture of Doc Judge earlier. Um, and it reminded me really of um, what I'm, why I am doing what I'm doing now in the first place. So, um, yung mga electrical double layer kanina, saka yung silica and hematite and glass beads. So, yeah, and I just would like to express my gratitude to Doc Judge for, for paving the way for us, really, to pursue lifelong learning and research that would create an impact to our community. So, thank you po, Doc Judge. Yun lang po. Thank you, Ms. Jern. Uh, in our Zoom audience, we also have Dr. Oscar Ferrer. Hi, so, Oscar. Hi, hi, Dr. Oski. Would you like to say a few words, Dr. Oski? Hi, hello, Dr. Hi, Nakamute. Nakamute. Hi. Um, Magandang. Magandang hapon. Mabuhay, Dr. Judge. Maraming salamat sa pagbabahagi ng malalim na kaalaman sana maging aplikant aplikable ito sa buhay ng mga susunod na henerasyon at magsilbing susi ito at saka magpausad sa ating pambansang kaunlaran kasi yung mga knowledge sa na binabanggit natin 
wala silang impact. Marami tayong mga pinag-graduate na mga UP graduates pero kulang ng social impact. Ganun pa rin, nagkikikaos pa rin ang Pilipinas. Hindi pa rin natamu yung national development. Ang dami nating pinaaral, mahuhusay, sumakum laude, magna cum laude, pero ikaos pa rin at saka naghihingalo pa rin yung bayan. Kaya sabi ko, mas magandang yung sinasabi mo, Dr. Jads, na lifelong learning, makausad, at bilang uh, recommendation siguro sa ating pagtutuwang sa pagsulong ng mga makabagong teknolohiya para mapahusay ang kalagayan ng ating mamamayan. Sana magsilbi itong inspirasyon na hindi lang lifelong learning kundi mas lifelong sharing and application of the learned process upang umusad yung kalagayan ng bansa. Kasi hanggang ngayon nananatiling hindi pa third hindi ko alam kung tinatawag nilang third world pa rin ang Pilipinas pero hindi rin makasasabing second world or first world ang Pilipinas. Kaya lang siguro sa ating mga inisyatiba gaya ng sinagawa mo ngayon magsilbi itong isang uh, hakbang para sa ganun uh, ang ating mga susunod na inerasyon hindi lang sila idealist at saka theoretician na nasa utak lamang ang kaalaman kundi talagang isinasakato para no kung sa ganun tuloy-tuloy yung sinasabi mong lifelong learning and sharing So isang katanungan dito siguro, uh, maaaring hindi mo masagot ngayon, paano natin gagawin ito? Yamang tayo ay uh, nag-exit na tayo at medyo paalis na tayo ng sentro ng pagkikilanlan at saka sentro ng pag-aalam. We are leaving the academic setting. How would we still infuse the passion and the rigor? so that our students and the next generation will be able to imbibe the inspiration and the courage to join in the national development. Maraming salamat. Mabuhay ka. Happy birthday. Uh, thank you very much, Doc Oski. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, Doc Oski, maraming... Doc Oski was my classmate high school, no? Okay. sa seminary. So, muntik naging pare si Doc Oski. But anyway, we met here and she is connected with the community development. So when I started the project, when I thought of this going to the community, small scale, sabi ko hindi ko kaya to technically. I need someone who is an expert sa community. So I'm very glad Doc Oski is there. So ang tanong ni Doc Oski, how will we continue? Uh, of course, we have this. Now, it was very easy for me because I have students to continue what I've started. I'm very proud to see Doc Kate is here. Okay? Doc Kate is the next. Okay? Alam niya lahat. I made her my assistant. So pag nag na ako, she, she can continue. Sila Carlo, sila Hana, they can continue what we have started. And it's, and nangyayari yan. Doc Kate, okay, proposed a project and work again as a continuation of our project. Continue now. So that's how we should continue. Again, I was able to continue my accomplishments, my achievements as a group because of my <laughs> That's we will, how we wish to continue, Dr. I, Dr. Oski. Okay. Nation, Dr. Oski was uh, talking about nation building, strengthening a strong nation. I borrowed that from my father book to build a strong nation. What we're doing here now, okay, kahit malit lang, but if we are dedicated and are concerned as technology, giving this or imparting this to the community who needs a technology, that but our comfort zone, I will answer also the 
in addition to the question ano, ni Hannah kanina about research. Sabi ni Doc Pasquier, we have conducted a lot of research here in the university. Pero kokonte ang lumalabas. We don't like our research that, that we write nasa shelf lang. And then we will receive awards for that. No. It is better that the technology that we develop gagamitin ng iba. We should help people. We should be a contribution to national development. Our project is small scale. Is a small scale industry is a very sensitive community. When we when we uh, turn over the technology to them, okay, they're still apprehensive. But because here's a technology, we don't know anything about it. They say it's very good, it's excellent, but we are using something that we can recover something, recovery, and here comes a new technology. It will take time. Teaching again is very important. We have to train and teach them until such time that they will be 100% steward or owners of the technology. It will take time. But what we have accomplished, Carmen, no? we have already built uh, plants around the Philippines, four plants, one in Benguet, one. This is gold plants for the small scale. And uh, you know this because I mentioned this in our class, and two in Mindanao. Yun mga plantang yon. It's not only recovery. My analysis jan, okay. My mineral processing jan. My hydrometallurgy jan. My pyrometallurgy. My tailings. It's a complete package. And we give that for to the small scale to use. But we have to educate them further. Thank you so much, Doc Judge, for that fruitful conversation. If anyone has uh, wants to know more advice from Doc Judge, uh, feel free to meet him after this program. Okay. So, in the interest of time, uh, before we head to the next part of the program, here are more messages from your advice. Happy birthday, Doc Judge. May God bless you all the more po and uh, enjoy your retirement. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Doc Judge. Uh, congratulations. Happy birthday, Doc Judge. May God bless you all the more po and uh, enjoy your retirement. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Doc Judge. Uh, congratulations po, Doc on your retirement and your wonderful career. Salamat po for being such a wonderful mentor to us throughout the years. And uh, we will always cherish for your advice and your uh, help me sa amin. Thank you then po sa lahat ng opportunities and lahat ng learnings uh, as our Nino also. Uh, we expect to learn a lot more from you and have more fun times with you and just Thank you for shaping our careers and uh, we look forward to having given more guidance. And yeah, Happy thank birthday, you. Happy birthday, Paul. And yeah, thank you very much again. And enjoy your retirement, po. Hi, my name is Angela Amparado, and for short. I met Doc Judge here at the National Engineering Center not so long ago. He was our blocks professor in our mineral processing, plant design, and surface science classes. He was also my thesis advisor in both undergrad and grad school. Lahat po yun mahihirap na subjects, but I'm proud to say that we learn from the best. I was invited by Doc Judge to join his MSMRL team in 2007. It was truly an honor. MSMRL was a minerals research lab where we had lots of fun while learning and creating solutions. Doon din po yung umpisa ng simula ng pagtaba ni Nasir Brian Buenaventura 
and Ma'am Ivy Bellaro Gonzalez. If you know them, you know what I mean. Doc's greatest influence among the many influences he had on me was for me to pursue a master's degree in Met E. His second greatest influence was for me to finish and actually earn the degree. You know, Doc was the only person left, the last man standing, who believed that I could still finish my MS thesis and graduate. Even my parents were telling me that it's okay, anak, if you want to stop your experiments na. Bahala na if we have to pay the OST. But Doc had a firm belief that I can do it. And it made all the difference. Up to this day, there are many things, not just the academics, but important life skills that Doc taught us that I continue to apply in my career and personal life. On top of the list is that learning should never end and that coffee is life. For the third and last talking point on memorable moments with Doc, Siguro I'd say it was that trip in Baguio, my very first trip in Baguio. The year was 2008 with the MSMRL team. Doc called it a reconnaissance trip. I had to Google the meaning and pronunciation of reconnaissance. I Google nyo na lang din, okay? Doc touched us at Victory Terminal at around 4 in the morning in slippers with the socks naman. Then, tumawid lang kami kasi pala bahay na nila yung nasa Engineer's Hill. We had so much fun in that trip. We ate a lot and enjoyed a night of music and chocolate fondue at the manor. Social. Doc was also part of many other memorable times and seasons of my life. The board exams, the Better Mind Project CNB. It was also Doc Judge who encouraged me to enter and pursue a career in one of our government agencies and instructed me to be good there. Until now, I'm trying my best to follow his instructions every single day. Doc is a true encourager and influencer. Panis yung mga YouTubers na yan. Happy, happy birthday, Doc Judge. 50th po ano. Every time I remember you, I always pray for your good health po. And that you and Mom Lea will have peace and enjoyment in the simplicity and completeness of the everyday. Thank you po for being a second father to me. Mula noon pa pong college hanggang ngayon. I know the same is true to a lot of my blockmates and teammates in the project. We appreciate and love you for the judge. How did I meet Doc Judge? Doc Judge was my professor in my professional major courses in metallurgical engineering uh, in UP Diliman, um, particularly in the surface science na subject. How did Doc Judge influence my career? Uh, Doc Judge was one of the prime mover of my career in research. His vision of making an impact in the mining industry, especially for small-scale mining communities in the country, influenced me a lot. I still carry Doc Judge's words in my heart right now when he said that PhD means helping people. That's it. That's simple. Um, and as long as I pursue what I am passionate about and what matters most, the, then money will follow. All these pearls of wisdom meant a lot to me, even to this day, and I share it to people. So now I am sharing and passing these same words to a number of people in my team, including researchers and students that I mentor. Any memorable moments with Doc? Uh, in class, it would be the Zeta Potential Lectures and those his drawings on the boards the NEC building fourth floor. Uh, in the project, all field works because there's always that balance, you know, perfect balance of having fun while doing great work in research. And there's food, of course. Um, and one especially memorable field work was when we went to Diwalwal. Doc Judge spoke to my parents 
um, and explain to them um, his plans uh, for me academically and his desire to support me. And at that time, I really felt his genuine care, um, like he is really family. So with that, I am and will always be grateful. Um, so happy birthday, Doc Judge, and uh, thank you for everything that you have invested in me and in us. Hi, I'm Mike Verdillo. I graduated BS Smith in 2013 and MS Smith in 2018. Um, I've known Doc Judge since 2012 and he became my MET 127 professor. Uh, surface science. So first impression ko kay Doc was terror and strict kasi may balibalita na kapag hindi mo daw nasagutan yung RAC curve niya, ay babagsak ka na. And yung finals exam, may RAC curve and hindi ko nakuha. So, Kabang-kaba na ako na baka ko bumagsak and all. Pero, hindi naman pala to, fake news. Mabait naman si Doc, bumasa ako. And career-wise, yung influence si Doc Judge doon is to take up master's degree program as soon as possible. Uh, after boards, actually, my plan was to you know, first take a rest and also to work in the industry for two to three years. Saka na ako mag-master's uh, enrollment. Pero when he offered me the miners project, sabi niya, I will take you into the team. Pero yung one thing in return na hinihingi niya is to enroll in a master's degree. Kahit anong master's program daw, basta after the project, master's degree holder na. And because of it, na fast track yung career ko. So I am where I am right now because of it. The opportunities that came are like jigsaw puzzle na they fit perfectly. Uh, memories. Uh, maraming memorable memories si Doc Judge. Yung pinaka-memorable for me is yung pagiging foodie ni Doc. Uh, Lalong-lalo na pag fieldwork. Siyempre, fieldwork budgeted, so tipid-tipid. Pero pagkasama mo si Doc Judge, ay bawal magtipid. Masasarap yung food, tsaka busog na busog. Tapos nakuha ko din sa kanya yung habit na nagko-coffee or tea after meal. Lalong -lalo, uh, for example, yung sa... Uh, forest house, like pababahan kami ng victory, madaling araw. So we always order chamomile tea, pampakalma. So, Doc, happy, happy birthday. I wish you good health and more birthdays to come. And happy retirement. Mar I know for sure marami po po kayong gustong i-achieve. And don't worry, your legacy will continue. And the seeds that you've planted in us will always grow. So, take care, Doc. So again, congratulations, Doc, for all your achievements. And thank you for imparting us your knowledge and expertise. So for, na, for the next part, may we call on Doc Kate Tungpalan, Sir Franco Lubistro, and is Mom Mitch Oyales here? Eh, Doc Candy? Ah, okay, so and Doc Candy Mergado on the stage. Ito. Sir Franco. And Mike, you're also a part of this. So, so Michael and Ate Ange, please come on stage. Bro. This is the time. Uh, when we receive this award, this is uh, Gawad Chancellor Natatanging Program Pang uh, Extension Community. Uh, everything was online. So I received this on behalf of the department, okay, with a medal and a trophy. This is to recognize the contribution of the department and the College of Engineering in general to the project. We did this project also in partners with the CSWD. You saw Doc uh, 
uh, OSCE now. Now, we want to formally hand over, in the turnover, hand over this award to the department through the department chair. So here is my team. Come to the okay, team, and then. Yeah, they're part of my team, okay? So I told them that this is your accomplishment, not mine, okay? Marami pa, no? That's yeah, no? We were able to turn over and grant free license because of the clean gem technology to four regional uh, areas, Big Benguet, uh, Bicol, and then Caraga, and also in Compostela. Yeah, these are the four facilities. Tumayuto, okay? They're now functional. And so I think the, what is, who is operational now is uh, both Caraga and Nabuntunan. Okay, in Baguio, I think uh, we still have to, kasi maraming nangyari because of the COVID. Now, uh, Doc Candy, as chair, we want to hand over this uh, I will pass the baton to her now. Yeah. And then, dito, 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 dito. Ayan. Ayan. So, yan ang kwan namin, no? Uh, ayan, picture tayo, picture, picture tayo. Dito, kasagit na, Doc. Yeah. Ayan, sige, sige, tayo, ayan. Okay, thank you. So you can place that in your office. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah, but the doctor. So, okay. so uh, we would like to ha uh, hear a few words from the, our department chairperson, Dr. Candy Mercado. Uh, I would like to uh, give my heartfelt thanks to Doc Judge, um, to all the students here. Uh, I think you have what you have seen today is a true example of what being an engineer, an ingeniero ng bayan is, uh, is. So I hope Doc Judge was able to give you a concrete example of that. And in the future, you look into this day and when, when you are thinking, oh, paano ba maging ingeniero ng bayan? Ito, ito na ang example ni Doc Judge. And to Doc Judge, uh, thank you very much for this. The department um, appreciates this uh, uh, that you uh, allow us to take care of this uh, award and we will put this in a very um, in a position where everyone can see it and will be inspired by the work that you have done. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much, Dr. Candy, for those inspiring message. So now I believe, Dr. Judge, you have a surprise for us and some thank you message to your DMEE and COE family. Okay. Uh, uh, this is a, I ask this, um, uh, I want to thank also the Franco. No? Franco is the organizer and coordinator of all of this event. I asked her, I asked him personally, my surprise ako. Now, uh, this surprise is something very special. Okay, uh, remember, uh, dalawa yan, no? dalawa. Okay, remember sabi ko, uh, when I was commented na uh, the technology was impossible. There is one person, okay, mm, who who encouraged me to move on, to fight, 
and she supported me up to now. And I want to thank her very much to, to my wife, Leigh. I want you know my wife's birthday was June 23. I purposely not give her a present. I was waiting for this so that we can celebrate together. Thank you very much, Tony. That's for her. Kung, kung tatanungin nyo, kung ang pag-ibig my forever, she is my forever. I have another surprise. Okay. Uh, she's always a constant source of inspiration para sa amin mag pati ako, no? And she was able to link Okay. my generation to the new generation. I have to understand you, but because of her, I was, I want, I have to understand you. You're a different generation. I have to understand. I have to consult her. And that's my daughter, Elena. I want also to Thank her. Her birthday was uh, September 30. I purposely not give him, give her also a present and waited for this so that we can celebrate together. Thank you very much. Okay. So with that, thank you very much. That is the final or that is the end of my professorial lecture. Thank you very much. Now, I want also to thank, of course, I want also to thank people who are in the online who watch this. I think my brothers and sisters abroad, or my sister is in New Zealand, my brother, they're also watching. My close friends, they're also watching. Thank you very much. But my last lecture is dedicated to my wife, and my daughter. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul, uh, Doc Judge, for this and uh, for this professorial lecture. And happy birthday, Paul. Yeah, thank you. So <laughs> before we end today's program, our attendees have been promoted to panelists. So they may open their cameras. May we ask you for a quick photo with our lecturer? Ah, okay. Ah, promote pa lang. So habang inaay siling Zoom, maybe we can sing Doc Judge a happy birthday. So, <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. So we prepared two cakes. Uh, cakes. <laughs> wow, my favorite cakes. Okay. Yung sabi ni, sabi ni Mike na yung laging may dessert after eating. Yan ang mga dessert na yan. But anyway, thank you very much for this. I'll blown up. I have a wish. I have a lot of wishes. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay, so for the Zoom uh, participants, please open your camera so we can have a picture taking session. And uh, 
for for the, the uh, for the students can you move lang closer to the stage that they're facing uh, dito na lang tayo sa harap ng stage yeah please uh, we'll have a group photo everyone please dito na lang tayo Uh, sabi ko, may picture tayo. Okay. Oh, thank you, thank you. 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 <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Come. Ma, come join us. Ma, Ma, Matthew, come join us. Yeah, he'll sit here. He's a tire. Yeah, he's a tire. He's a tire. He's a Doc Candy, dito tayo. Dito, dito nga. Dito po tayo yan. You, you pull the chair na lang, we pull the chair. Dito tayo. May you sit here. Anak, mas you come, come. Yeah. Come, let's sit here, Mama. Let's sit here. Mama, let's sit here. Yeah, yeah, let's sit here. There, there, you sit there. Anak, you sit there. Yeah, see, you see. Ayan. <laughs> see, can you share now? Ayan. Ayan. One, two. <laughs> yes. Laughter is the Or umupodal ayan yan. Okay, thank you. Wow, thank you very much. Ayan. Oi, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, so and that concludes <laughs> our professorial lecture for today. We hope that our featured speaker inspired and encouraged you in pursuing your respective careers in the academe and the industry and in contributing to our communities. We also hope that you learned a thing or two that could help you in your current research or projects. Please like and follow the DMME Facebook page so you may be updated on our future events. Thank you, everyone, and stay, stay safe. Okay, so, so just some reminders before you go. Uh, for those who haven't yet filled up the registration form at the entrance, please do so. Also, we have a few, uh, yeah, Sir Franco, we have some snacks uh, at the entrance, so feel free to partake in that. So thank you everyone for joining.
one land, one group of talent. My, see, we can, I think we can go home now. No, we can decide the two things. I will go home. No, we can, my snacks come here. We can go home. Well, you, to I, you have to go ahead. You have to go, you have to go ahead. Uh, I'll just say with you back. See you later. Anna, can you bring this home? How about your mask? No, I, I have my mask here. Sige, you take care of your heart, huh? Okay, bye. Hindi, iikon mo sa pakal nila. Ako, kukuha na lang. Ako, wow. Yeah. Ah, yes. Wait. Oh, you can go.